Welcome back to episode 8 of Little Treasure Cove and the final build episode of the series. It's okay, don't cry, it'll be okay. Moomin is here for you. Is this comforting? Anyway, one reason not to be disappointed is the dark ride you're about to witness today. There is one plot left to fill in the park and it's quite a large one. If you can cast your minds back, you'll remember the wonderful FSF Ranger built an incredible indoor log flume in this very spot. But since then it's been taken apart piece by piece to make way for a brand new ride. Without further ado, over to Wormgar to present his mind-blowing track ride, Undead Scourge. Alright, hey Moomin, hey everybody. Uh, so when uh, Moomin asked me to build this, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to build at first, so I started off with uh, the towers that you see above the blueprint. I kind of just went with a general, you know, shantytown vibe, uh, attached some, some ladders and some uh, boat housings and uh, just kind of got it to where I thought it looked um, impressive looking and, and I was pretty happy with it. So I finally let Moomin know kind of what my inspiration was and I, I wanted to do a dark ride based off of kind of a ghost, ghost pirate story. My inspiration for the build was mainly some of the, the blueprints of the past that I've seen on uh, from the community. Um, I've seen some people touch on ghost pirate stories and elements from that, and uh, yeah, I wanted to expand on that a little bit. Um, so of course, going with a little bit of realism based off of the Little Rock Ridge Park that um, Moomin started this off with, and I really like that idea of turning it into a multi-park story of kind of changing the theme. And also keeping it to the basic game parts, uh, just all the pieces and models that you can get from the base game, um, kind of including our console players. Uh, that was really fun to f try to figure out how I'm going to do that. I've never worked with that restriction f before, but it has something I thought about and I wanted to do. I took that as a, as a good challenge. So I, I laid out my ride and I, I actually went through a couple iterations of that before I settled on a layout that I found appropriate for the space and for the, uh, the story that I was thinking of. So. It, you might find it odd that I chose the sleigh ride as the car for the for the track, but I, I mainly picked that because of the wood look and the the lamps on the front. I, I thought those would give kind of that ghostly, kind of consistently, you know, ghostly appearance throughout the whole ride by changing the color. And I really liked how that turned out. I'm glad I made that choice. Of course, I wanted the whole ride to be un under slightly underwater so that it would hide the track. Kind of gives it more of like a boat feel, so kind of kept that even though there are parts that go outdoors and uh, and up and around it's kind of adds a little bit of extra depth to the to the ride I think and so the way I started the theming was at the final scene and actually I think it's probably a good tip for people trying to build dark rides is if you're thinking of a story that you really want to you know kind of flesh out more maybe starting with what your final scene is going to be um, so that you don't go too uh, out of scale with that. You know, you might get halfway through the ride and you're, you find that your pacing is off because you've just been working from the front and you keep building um, from the start and you, you get to sections where you go more impressive and then after that it tapers off and you kind of you might lose a little bit of inspiration, and so it's it's good at the very end to have like like that final moment where you're most inspired, and try try to keep that until you're happy. And so you know, I try to use some of the the basic game animations, and thankfully that includes some of the newer pieces that were added to the game later on that are still considered base game, uh, like the sprinklers and the some of the some of the animations. Yeah, I was pretty happy with the the stonework that I did um, for the fort. Um, once I was done with all like the the tunnel theming and the story is basically just that you're going through the sewers so that was uh, fun to design and and then you come out through the the shanty town and the pirates are being overtaken by the the undead spirits who are getting revenge on uh, the soldiers that were keeping people in the town a little bit oppressed so I think that's a cool little revenge story um, that was really fun to do with all the base game animatronics uh, very challenging. After all of the interior was done, I worked on the outside. Uh, you know, I, I already mentioned that I got the fort done, um, and just kind of set the towers up top, uh, built the boarding station, and was really happy with that how that turned out. I tried to keep a little bit of realism there with control booth and and uh, other operating features like uh, bag drop off and you know that kind of stuff. All of this was within 8K, um, 8,000 parts. 
Uh, of course, then I had to figure out how to separate that into two separate blueprints for Moomin to attach it to his park. That was probably the most challenging part of it. Although, actually, come to think of it, naming the blueprint is the most challenging thing for me, because I don't have a way with words, so um, I just looked up some pirate sounding things and tried to go along with what the story had and I came with up with uh, Undead Scourge. Thought that sounded appropriate. I, I think that wraps it up. Um, uh, thank you so much, Moomin. Despite being the final addition to the park, Wormgar was actually the first person to complete their build, and I couldn't have been more pleased when I received it. He not only created an immersive story, built one of the most stunning track rides I've ever seen, but also created some special effects that I genuinely had to go in and pull apart to understand how it was even achieved. Thank you Wormgar for adding what is most certainly the cherry on the cake. So, rather than boring you with me adding the final details like bins and benches, we'll skip ahead and jump straight to the finished park. As you know, Little Treasure Cove used to be Little Rock Ridge, so what better way to show the transformation than taking a look at the before and after? The only difference being, we go from amazing build to amazing build. Aren't we a lucky bunch? Starting off with a classic, in episode 1 of Little Rock Ridge, Yura created Tomahawk, and boy what a fine example of a vanilla build this was. Responsible for replacing the sundial with a hammer swing was Poetry Slam 78, and my goodness did she deliver. One of the best creators when it comes to details, and she did not disappoint. Next up came Plastic Swan's beautiful Just a Memento, complete with an interior. Yet again, another example of incredible detail. And whose job was it to replace such a fantastic gift shop? That would be me. I have nothing to say about my own work, so here, just look at it for a moment. Next up came Nerd Chacho's phenomenal B&M Flawless. With its many inversions, it sat beautifully on the skyline and was a key attraction of the park. Tasked with replacing Tempestata was Coaster Cad, and to say he succeeded would be an understatement. This is easily one of the most impressively themed coasters I've seen in the game. 
Over by the car park, the master builder that is Combat Wombat created this stunning insanity skin, Black Gold. Complete with a Q interior, this masterpiece blended into the park perfectly. Responsible for building in its place was, oh, me again. Yes, I tasked myself with skinning a ride that's already skinned. Well, I say I tasked myself. It was the ride that nobody else wanted, and for good reason. Episode 5 of Little Rock Ridge brought the most detailed ride skin I've ever seen with Ralph's Rickety Rotator. How Sublines created such an immersive ride skin in such a small space is beyond me, but my goodness is it incredible. Taking its place was the unforgettable Whirlyman rig by the one and only Johnny Five Alive. A demonstration of superb detail, amazing basic shape art, and even a custom song to go along with it. Next we had the privilege of receiving a beautiful coffee shop by the Twitch legend that is Wix. Standing on both the inside and the outside, this was a welcome addition to the park. It was out with the SFC and in with the Pip Shop with Solaris's stunning tavern. A build with so much character, perfectly encapsulating the pirate theme. Furana was the next guest, adding this wonderful chief beef and cosmic cow combo. Yet another demonstration of an ultra detailed build taking the park to the next level. Once again, I had massive boots to fill when it came to replacing this duo with… a quad? That sounds weird. There were two builds, and now there are four, okay? Also I put a boat on top. In episode 8, the lovely Christine created one of the most iconic builds of the park with Frontier Flyers, not only creating a beautiful ride skin, but a whole flippin' airship to go with it. Zippaku came in to replace the aeronauts with the Roctopus. This gorgeous creation was the perfect way to kick off Little Treasure Cove. The legend that is Paulsley was up next to skin the Hellion Ring, and my goodness did he. Complete with a mini shooting gallery and custom sign, this characterful creation was one to remember. Yet again, I was quaking in my tiny boots as I attempted to create an adequate replacement. I went with the classic top spin, and okay, I don't think it looks that bad. That's the best you'll get from me. Episode 10, we were lucky enough to get Johnny's partner in crime, Zelixor. He not only added a fantastic hat's fantastic, but an absolutely smashing kickflip too. Get it? Because it's literally smashing through the roof? Comedy gold. Following suit, Starport 55 created a whole row of buildings to go along with his awe-inspiring 360 power hurricane, complete with thunder and lightning effects. Our penultimate guest of Little Rock Ridge was the incredible SC Reconcile, with easily the best mine train coaster I've seen. Despite being later in the series, his episode is one of the most viewed, and it's easy to see why. Who could have been tasked with replacing such a brilliant coaster? Well, Nerd Chacha of course, and he didn't disappoint. Much like his flawless from Little Rock Ridge, this compact invert sure does pack a punch. Last, but by no means least, came our dark rides. FSF Ranger was the obvious choice first time around, and he most certainly proved his worth with Pioneer's Creek, an indoor log flume. Finally, as you just witnessed, Wormgar came in and stole the show with his phenomenal track ride, Undead Scourge. And there we have it, yet another park complete. The park is now officially on the workshop, so why not go and take a wander around yourself? I'll put the links for both versions of the park in the description. I'll be back in two weeks time with as many of our guests as I can wrangle together for a park tour. I'll leave you with some extended cinematics, and I'll see you soon.